All right, so let's talk about the Mann-Whitney U-test now. The Mann-Whitney U-test is basically the equivalent of the T-test, but useful for non-parametric data. So basically it's when you have two groups of data that you're trying to compare, and you're trying to see if those two sets of data are statistically significantly different, right? And so basically the idea is the same. You have a null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that the two data sets are the same. There's no difference between those two, or any difference you see is just random variation. Right? So the null hypothesis is that there's no difference, and then we are trying to see if we can reject that null hypothesis and therefore say that we are confident to the 95% level that these two do come from a different population, that two data sets are different. Right? So when can we use this? Well, you have to be only looking at one variable, just like the t-test, so only one, one variable that you're changing, and it's when you have two different categories of that variable has to be unmatched, data and the data has to be rankable. Both tests have to have more than one observation and at least one of the samples has to have greater than five observations. So in other words you have to have replicates and at least one of the samples has to have at least more than five replicates. All right, and so this can be done with non-parametric data. All right, um, again non-parametric stats can be used for parametric data but if you know it's parametric you want to use the t-test because that's more powerful. But if you have non-parametric data because it's a non-bell-shaped uh, curve, it's non-normal, it's uh, not interval data, whatever it might be, then you would use the Mann-Whitney U-test. So how do we do this? Um, let's practice with a new set of data. So we've looked at height of periwinkles in two populations. Um, we've actually seen this data before, but really this data does not look like a normal distribution. I mean, if you saw this, you could probably say it's not a normal distribution. In fact, we have some outliers here. This is a, a classic example of things that you would need to use non-parametric data for because we need to look at the medians rather than the means because these outliers are gonna skew the means somewhat. All right, so we can now add the Mann-Whitney U test to our list of uh, tests that we should know about when to use the data. So Mann-Whitney U, again, just real quick, it's you're comparing two groups. You have at least five in one of the populations. Um, we don't need to worry about the variance, and this is for non-parametric rankable data. All right, so how do we do this? So the first thing is always you need to generate the null hypothesis. Um, so the null hypothesis basically is just stating there's no difference between the periwinkles from the North Shore and the periwinkles from the South Shore. And that might be because your hypothesis is that you think there will be a difference because you think pollution on the South Shore, for example, might be hindering periwinkle um, growth. So whatever it might be, but you again need to really have the purpose of your experiment, the hypotheses and the predictions ready to go, just go, just like any other aspect of science that we've talked about previously. Then you're going to have to arrange the data. So this is rankable data. So use the uh, things we've learned about ranking data. Assigning ranks. All right. So this is basically the rank averages. And then once we have the rank averages, we get the sums. So the sums of uh, group one and the rank average sums of group two. And so this also gets us another very uh, number n1 and n2. So n as usual is just the number of replicates in group one and the number of replicates in group two. Then this looks pretty complex but what we need to do is calculate the u calculated for each sample. So the u calculated for group one is n1 times n2 so the number of replicates multiplied together plus n2 times n2 plus 1 over 2 minus R2, All right? And so R2, again, is that ranked sum that we had. So we basically, for U1, we're taking into account the number of replicates, because the more replicates you have, the larger your ranked sums are going to become. And uh, you're basically kind of taking those into account, and then you're seeing what the ranked sum gives you, because you're subtracting that from it. U2 is the same thing, except this time we're focusing more on, after the N1 times N2, we're focusing more on N1 times N1 plus 1 over 2 minus R1. So basically, the only thing you really have to consider is for U1, you're using the replicates for group 2, actually, in this part here, and minus the, uh, the sum, rank average sum of group 2. And for U2, you're using more of the replicates for N1, the replicate numbers for M1, 
minus the sum ranked for it, R1. All right, this will become a little bit more clear as we go through. All right, so whatever the smaller value you, you get is going to be you calculating. And so that one is going to be what we're really focusing on. And if you really want to check yourself, u1 plus u2 actually should be the same as your n1 times n2. And that's a quick way to see if you have your um, u's correct. All right, so once you find the u critical, what you have to do is then compare this, or sorry, once you find the u calculated, what you have to do is compare this to a u critical. All right, and the u critical is going to use a table. So that table uses the intersection of n1 and n2. So again, n1 and n2 are our number of replicates. And you can see here that we need more than five for at least one of these. All right, so there's kind of a certain amount of, of uh, combinations. If you only had five of replicates from one and two from another, you can't do this. So there's a minimum number of kind of replicates for each group. But one key thing here, this is the first time where our n is the actual n. That's why it's not called degrees of freedom or v. N, so we're not subtracting one this time. So if you have, for example, if you have a replicates of 10, you use 10. So if we had replicates of 10 in one group and 15 in the other group, our U critical would be 39. So then finally, if the U calculated is less than the U critical, then you are able to reject the null hypothesis. And I'll show you how, what this means in the end. So let's take a look at this actual actually together. All right, so here we have the data. We have the periwinkles at Porthcall on the lower shore and the upper shore data we've used before. But again, this is not really a parametric data, so we should have been using um, our non-parametric stats all along. So the first thing we need to do is get the ranked averages. Since this is non-parametric, we want the ranked averages. So equals rank average. This is the stuff we've done already. I want the rank average data point for this whole group of data and I want it ascending so I need comma one and then I need to remember that my group of data is not changing so I may need my dollar signs kind of around the column and in front of the number for my whole data set so that doesn't move right, so there's a rank average uh, number there and so once we have that, if we've done it right, we can just copy over and we can see we can get all of our rank averages and there we go. So easy peasy, once you have um, know how to do the rank averages, if, as long as you make sure you've done it right. And I always take another data point and just check. So this data point is indeed comparing that and it still is comparing the whole data set. And yes, indeed, I do have an ascending order here. So everything looks pretty good. All right, so then I can get the sums of these. There's the sum of all my rank averages. So there's one for one of them. There's my sums for the other. So remember the sum of the lower one, right? So this one is, we'll call this one here, R1. And this is the ranked average sum of R2. And now we can go ahead and start to make our calculations. So once we have that, I need a few other things. I need to know what N1 is. I need to know my N1 is number of data points. So how many data points do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So remember, I also could have just used the count function to tell me that if I didn't want to count myself. That's especially important if you are have huge data sets that you can't count or you would make mistakes if you count. But for this data set, we know that we have 13 replicates in group one and we have 13 replicates in group two. So that's important because we're gonna be using this formula here to calculate our U1s and U2s. So a couple things that I need, I need to have N1 times N2. All right, and so that's pretty simple. That's just 13, 13 times 13. So that's my N1 times N2 value. And 
that's the same for both. And then I also need my n2 times n2 plus 1, and then all of that over 2. Right? And I would need that for n1 also, but since both of them have the same replicates, it's actually going to be the same number. So essentially what I'm looking at here is equals 13, and then n plus 1 is 14. And then I'm going to have all of that divided by 2. So my n's times n plus 1 over 2 ends up being a value of 91. So now if I'm going to get u1, u1 is basically u1 is going to be equal to my 169 value plus 91. All right, so my 161 value covers this part here, n1 times n2. My 91 value covers this part right here. And then remember, for u1, I'm actually subtracting r2. I apologize, it's a little bit hard to see over here. So we're actually subtracting r2. And so for this value, I need to subtract my r2, which is 197.5. So U1 ends up being a value of 62.5. U2 is going to basically be the same idea. So I still have my 169, which came from my N1 times N2. I have my 91, which came from this whole set here. And then I need to subtract R1, and R1 was 153.5. So that value was 106.5. Remember, the smaller u is the u calculated. So this one indeed ends up being my u calculated. So how do I, what do I do with that? I have my u calculated here. I need to find my u critical. So if I go back over here, I will use this table. And I know that I have 13 data sets, 13 data points in each one. So n of 13 and n of 13. So I look at my 13 over here, and I drop down, and I find 13 over here. My U critical for this data set is 45. So now the rule is that if U calculated is less than U critical, you reject the null hypothesis. But in this case, my U calculated, the smaller one of these, is larger than my U critical, so I cannot reject the null hypothesis. These two groups are not statistically significantly different. Right. Now, let me try and explain why this works this way. Remember when we were talking about ranking data, we talked about if the data overlaps a lot, then they're probably from the same. They're not different. But if they overlap very little, then they are more likely to be significantly different. Right. So when would these numbers, if, they're, if these two ranked averages are similar, it's because the data overlapped a lot. And that means the ranked average numbers are both going to be fairly high. They're going to be right in the middle. And if both are fairly high, then even the lower one of these are still going to be high. And that tells you, and because that's higher than our U critical, it tells you that data overlapped too much. But if this data set, these two data sets are very different from each other, one of these is going to be a very high number and one of these is going to be a very low number. And that tells us that the data sets didn't overlap much because the rank averages were all low for one group and high for another group. And so if this data has a very low value and a very high value, when you subtract that high value from our, in getting our U here, when you subtract the high value, it's going to make your U calculated much lower, right? And that low U calculated value, if it's low enough, lower than the U critical, means that that is significantly different. So really, we're basically seeing if our data indeed overlaps too much to be different or only overlaps a little. And if it only overlaps a little, these values are going to be low and high. And when you subtract the high value, you get a very low U1. And by getting a low U1, if it's less than your U critical from the table, you know it's significant. All right, so here our data is not significant because U calculated was greater than U critical.